Should I sell my rental property in the Bay Area? I've been getting that question a lot recently, and I'm going to break it down today, so stick around. Hi, I'm Annie Baker. I'm a realtor here in the Bay Area, and I do work with investors quite often, and lately I've been getting a lot of questions about, should I sell my rental property in the Bay Area? And there is no one answer that is right for everybody, people. So don't think I have some magic information. That's not the case. And be sure to stick around to the end of the video. I'll give you some real stats so that it can help you make a decision if right now is a good time to sell your rental property. Everybody's situation really is different. The one thing I do know, most of my investors, when they purchased here, they purchased for appreciation, not passive income. So that's kind of something you have to think about what your situation is now moving forward compared to what it was. And I'm going with you've owned this property for at least five years. Rental prices have increased over that time. So maybe you are maybe even making a couple hundred dollars a month after property taxes and a mortgage. And it's been a good return for you as of the fall 2020, we are seeing some decreases now in rental prices. So how is that going to affect you and your specific situation? Are you in this for the long haul? Do you live in the area and you can oversee it pretty easily? Even if you have a property manager, it's always nice to be able to drive by and see the condition of your property. So maybe it just makes sense. Hold on, even with a little bit of the decrease in rents, you know, depending on what your tenant situation is like, maybe it still makes sense to just hold on to it. Great. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe you're thinking of leaving the area. Maybe you're thinking, geez, I could go to another market and maybe even buy two properties. Even if you're not in passive income from those properties, if you go to a growing area that housing is appreciating somewhat close to the appreciation rate here in the Bay Area, maybe that makes more sense. And one of the other things I always tell my investors to consider are what are the maintenance costs coming up, say, in the next year? Do you have to redo plumbing, electrical, uh, the roof? Do you have to do any kind of um, pavement work for the driveway, patios, sidewalks? A lot of sidewalks are lifting around uh, the Bay Area. They're coming after the homeowners to repair that or they'll do it at their cost, which is more expensive. Um, what about the water heater, if there's an air conditioner, all the mechanicals? So those are things, costs, if you have some significant costs coming up, maybe that's another reason that it makes sense to sell. Housing is doing amazing right now in good areas, good school districts. Still, we're getting multiple offers and whatnot, so it could be a good time for you to sell and go buy in other markets. One of the things I learned years ago from my business coach was a confused mind does nothing. And it's true, so you might just be sitting there thinking, you know, I've heard about people investing out of California, but I don't even know where to begin. Well, I'm gonna tell you right now, I've got realtors all over the country that can help you They've worked with investors. So I want to tell you about a few of the top markets people are predicting for the best areas to buy real estate coming up into 2021. So I looked up some stats for best markets for residential and commercial. And I did that because if commercial is going to be doing well, that means there's jobs. So people are going to have to move to those areas. So of the top 10 of both reports, there's two cities that are in the top 10 for both of them. So I'm going to focus on them first. We have Austin, Texas and Dallas, Texas. Austin, Texas has a median home price of $430,000, a projected 7.7 .7 appreciation rate next year. Dallas, Texas has a median home price of $240,000 with an appreciation rate of 6.1% predicted for next year. And in San Jose right now, the median home price is about 1.2 million with a projected appreciation rate of 9.9% .9 for comparison. Sunnyvale median home price is 1.7 with a projection of a 9.7 appreciation rate for next year. So I just wanted to kind of give you comparison. Those are two main cities. So you're comparing over a million dollars to essentially half that. You could go buy two, if not three properties in some of the, in these other markets with a pretty darn good appreciation rate. Maybe that makes sense for you. You might not only see some appreciation, but you actually might see some passive income. Maybe that's important to you. And I'm just gonna go over some of the other top cities that people are projecting will be great for residential real estate. 
great for rental properties. Eagle, Idaho. It's right outside Boise. Boise is a hot market. Eagle is a little higher end community right outside of Boise. The median home price there is $570,000 with an appreciation rate of 8.5% expected next year. So that's close to the Bay Area appreciation rate. Then we have Houston, Texas. The median home price is only $200,000. The appreciation rate is supposed to be 6.4%. Atlanta, Georgia, median home price, $300,000, appreciation rate of 7% projected. And then Las Vegas, Nevada, hot. I hear a lot of people moving there. And the median home price is around $300,000 with a projected uh, appreciation rate, 7.4%. So that just gives you some options. So I'm not saying to sell and get out. If you are thinking of selling, let's get you a top sales price and help you do a 1031 exchange avoid the taxes, possibly buy one or maybe multiple properties in some of these other markets. Maybe buy one house in Austin and one in Boise, Idaho. Who knows? I've got realtors in all those locations. So again, I'm here to just be a resource and provide some of that information. Go to my website under the resources tab and I can provide some of the articles that I got the data for, uh, for, for these stats. So I always have a link to the seven best tips to get the highest sales price for your house. So again, I'm Annie, Annie Baker. I'm here to help you with all your real estate questions. Don't hesitate to reach out, but until next one, have a great one.